Uh, is it your first time in Russia? Yes. Yes. Uh, and what are your impressions? Of Russia? Of Russia, yeah. How can I say that? It was very hard to get here because it was very hard to get the visa and all the paperwork and so on. And uh, then since we have been here, it's a, a big discovery because it's uh, everything is big. Uh, the country is big, the city is big, and the people heart is very big too. We are very surprised of the big welcome we had from the Russian people. It was really, uh, the people were very, very nice with us all the time, even the little shopkeeper. And uh, we're very, very happy. It, it was hard to come here, but we're very happy we are here. What do you think about uh, this event? Uh, what are your impressions about this festival? Well, uh, it's a little bit too early to, 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 to say because we've just uh, started and uh, it's just a rehearsal yet. Uh, and we haven't really talked and, and seen uh, a lot yet. But it seems like uh, they make a lot of efforts to make it nice. Uh, we know it's uh, the first time they're doing uh, something in Russia, so you need a little time. But uh, for a little and the first festival, I think that the job behind it is, is really great. They, they've done a very, very good job. Then, of course, after that, you can always improve on, on things and the rest. But you have to realize that uh, we live in Western Europe, so every city we have some Roman monument left. We have a lot of things very close from the Romans, and here you really have to look for the information. So they really did a very good job. Yes. Uh, how long are you into the war reconstruction? How did you start? Oh, I started in uh, 1999, and uh, we make uh, in a museum with a friend. We make a display about uh, the Roman army because it was in the south of France and they had a war with the Roman army over there. And uh, then a guy called me up and said, look, uh, we're making some reenactment troops and said, what, you dress as Roman? This is crazy, I mean, I'm never going to do that. Uh, but then I thought the guy was serious and he really knew a lot about the Romans and he showed me that it was interesting because when you dress like a Roman, you can have the feeling on how the Roman acted and how, how you can move, you know, with the equipment. So I told him, okay, if we don't dress like cinema, but if we don't do the real study to make the real equipment, I would be interested. And then I have tried, and you know, as we say in France, I've tried that, and then that, and then that, and then it was all arm in, inside. Uh, and since 1999, I've been making Roman reenactment. You know, the, fir the first time Daya, she, she, she called me, you know, and uh, I say, well, you know, it's interesting. I didn't really thought about it. And I say, well, r why do you do Roman in Moscow? You know, why in, in, in Russia? And then she said, oh, but you know, in southern Russia and in Crimea, there was some Roman. I say, yeah, that's true, you're, you're right. And then after I remember the Byzantium history and the, and the, the, um, uh, the Russian civilization is really based on what is left from Byzantium, which is, and somebody call it the third Rome, you know? So it's had to do a lot, a lot with Roman history as well. It's not because the Romans were not directly in Moscow, that they were not in Russia, and that they didn't have an influence on the Russian civilization. So I think, yes, it's logic in this way. Uh, as you see, we have a little bit different costume from the rest of the, the troops. And uh, we do the Roman Republic, and we do the Roman Republic from the Third Punic War until the time of Julius Caesar. Uh, right now the costume you see are the Third Punic War time, which means the destruction of uh, the city of Carthago by Scipio Aemilianus. Uh, this is the main period uh, we do, uh, which is about 150 before Christus. And most of the troops you see are about middle uh, first century AD, which means about 50 to 100. So we have more or less, you know, 300 years older, so we're very old soldiers. Uh, and this is why, you know, our costume and everything else is different. And uh, uh, did you participate in today's training on the field? Yeah, we did at the end because uh, uh, the, the organizer of the festival was nice enough to organize a trip in the city so we could visit Moscow. Then there was traffic jam. We arrived a little bit late, so everybody was already ready. We had to get the car and to do it quickly and to change while they were starting to maneuver. So we did the end of the maneuver. But we've been doing that for more than 15 years, so 
Anything we see tomorrow we can do with no problems. You had a lot of battles, but one of the favorite tactics of all armies, uh, you look at most, uh, most war, uh, even modern war, you know, uh, the principle is very simple. You have an enemy, you try to keep it in the center, you put some of the troops in the center, and then you try to go on one side or the other. Uh, this is a very classic maneuver. The Roman used it a lot of times, the Carthaginian used it, every army used it. You know, and uh, the Romans, they suffered the biggest defeat against Hannibal at Cannae in the battle, and it was exactly what happened, you know. The, the two armies, this is the Centurio commanding Baton. Uh, this is also good for drawing. If you look at the, the Battle of Cannae, the big battle between Hannibal and the Romans, you know, you had... The Carthaginian troops were like that. The Roman troops, they were like that at the beginning of the battle, okay? So when you're in the field, you only see a straight line of battle. You don't see this formation, okay? And what he did, he, he put his best troop here and here. So the battle start and the Roman they push forward, like usual, okay? So this was the first stage. What's happening is the Roman troops are here, and all the troops here, they're backing up. And you got these two lines here. So soon the Roman, they come here, and these troops, they are kind of defeated. So they run away, and the Romans are here, and you got these two columns, they do this and that from the back. And when you're with your shield and every, somebody gets you from the back, you have almost no chance. That's what Hannibal did at Cannae. And the Romans, they did exactly the same thing at Zama. You know, the big victory over Hannibal. Except the line were like that. And then you had the line here. The Carthaginians, they send the elephant in front. The Roman line opens, the elephant pass in front, and from the both side, they kill all the elephants. So then, you had again the two armies like that. And then they advance, they start fighting, and the Roman cavalry from the back just went around it. And then it was finished. Well, the costume here is not complete, because normally I have griefs and I have also big medals. Uh, the most difficult part really is not making the costume, it's making the research for the costume. Uh, funny enough, what we took a lot of time are the boots, because uh, this type of boots, we had writings about them, and we had a few drawing and sculpture. But then, for, when you go from a sculpture or from a painting to make the real thing, it's a little bit more difficult. So we had to try, and it took us about three years of studying and of trying before we could make the right model of boots. Um, this is something that you see a lot in antiquity. This comes from the Greek. And uh, this actually, you can see, is, is not a decorative item. It's also a protection because it's sick, you know. And if you move, you're always protected in this, uh, in this part. Now, when you have the, the, the shield, you know, most of the time the legs are also protected, so you don't bring that extra protection. But it's also something typical for, from the officer that they kept uh, all this equipment here and here. Some of the men had it, but mostly it, it was uh, at our, the end of our period, uh, this was an officer thing. Now, here's the, the cuirass, as you can see. It's made of small 6 mm rings that are buttered. Uh, it doesn't seem like, but you see, this is uh, a big point. If you touch, it's quite sharp, you know. And if I do that, it's not coming in. So it's very solid. You know, it even gets stuck in there. You you saw it. So this is a very good collection. And with the padding that is underneath, like that, is it's also act as a shock absorber. So in the whole thing, uh, it's a very good protection. Now, as you can see also, all Roman soldiers, they have an extra protection here and here. It's because when they used to fight, especially against the Celtic tribes, you know, with a Celtic sword, the sword generally comes like that. The Roman with the sword, they fight like that. And the Celtic, normally, the habit, they fight like that. So when they were fighting against people like the Greek and so on, the, the main weapon was the spear. And the spear always come in front, so it's not really a big deal. But when you come with a Celt, you know, you need a double protection. 
and especially when you are infantry and the Romans they were, use a lot of infantry cavalry the Romans they were not very good on horseback so when you have a, a barbarian on a horse coming you know from above with his sword you know all the shots were coming from above and even if you go with a point of a lens or something you know you got double protection there because when you go with a horse you know you go faster you know, if I hit him like that, it's something. If I hit him when I'm with a horse, it will be... So you get extra protection from the top. And uh, how were the commanders uh, all the time armed? The Roman is very, it's a big hierarchical system. So you have all the soldiers. Uh, in the time of the Republic, all the soldiers, most of them are peasants or uh, the lower part of the population. Not too poor, but not very rich either. These are the basic soldiers. Out of the soldier, you get the Opsio, which is the second in command, and you get the Centurio. The Centurio command, what we call a Centuria, but in the time of the Republic, it's 60 men. In the time of the Empire, it's 80 men. So you can compare it to a modern captain. And then, uh, these are people from, uh, from the lower classes. Above that, you got the Tribunes, and then you got the higher rank officer. They, they come uh, from um, the higher rank of the society, the aristocratic part of the society. So we are still the plebeian and uh, over us is the patrician. And uh, then these generally, they are dressed like Greek because historically um, they want uh, to look like Greek heroes, you know. So this is why uh, all the time the higher officer dressed like Greek. I'm a little bit like a Greek because I'm in the middle of the chain, you know. Uh, I've got uh, Hercules as a protector here, which is a Greek god. Uh, and something that you can see is different from the men and from me is the place of the sword. Because, can you take your shield, Mikhail, to show him? He's gonna take your shield to, to show him. Uh, the Centurion in his rank is always wearing the sword on this side. We are used to see the sword of his side because the knight, everybody, you know, they get the sword on this side all the time. It's normal. But this is a, a distinction of the higher officer. For the man, you know, if I, he, he got his shield protecting him, if I attack him, I push him here, you know, he cannot draw his sword. But because he got his sword on the other side, he can draw it. So all the rank, and actually it's more practical to, to have your, your sword this way. And the shield is both a defense and it's also an attack because it can really attack you. It can hurt me in the feet, it can hurt me in the knee, it can hurt me in the throat, it can hurt me here in the, in the, in the belly. In any case, I will fall down and then after that it's very dangerous. Uh, what uh, could you advise to beginners of war reconstruction? Well, the first thing uh, is to join a group uh, that know what they are doing. This is the best if you really start from zero. Now, if you have, there is no group in your region and you want to start, you first have to buy books and to study on the internet. And with that, you know, you go and ask other people. I have a lot of people from all over the world that ask me questions, saying, oh, Jean-Luc, how do I do that? And how do I make that? And how do I make this? And we are very happy to help the people. So don't hesitate to ask the people they know for advice, how to make the thing, where to buy, and so on. But it exists a lot of forums, you know. And today on Facebook, you have so many people that do Roman reenactment or Roman army talk, or even you go and look at the homepage, like, you know, we have a, a, a homepage uh, where people can go and see what we do. And we give a lot of answers also on equipment. How do we make our equipment? And how do we choose it? And so on. Uh, name three things you associate with Russia. Anything that comes to mind first. Russia? Yeah. Oh, the first thing that comes with Russia, it's big. <laughs> because everything is big and very large. And, and, and then the second thing for me is an old culture. Because uh, Russia is a very old culture. Uh, and uh, the third thing, you'll be very surprised by what I would say. Uh, because people generally, they don't think about it. But uh, for me, Russian is a continuation of Byzantium because you have the same religion. Uh, and because um, for me, the politics of Russia have been always based on the same ideal as Byzantium, which means you're in the, in the center of something and you have 
people, you don't know if they're going to be friend or enemy, so you have to build a belt of security around you. And this is a Roman logic. So for me, the Russian, they are more Roman in spirit than most of the other countries in the Western world. So this is my answer of your sweet question. This is how I view Russian. But then again, you know, I think we were all surprised because of what we hear in Western Europe and what we see in reality is completely different. We're so happy that we sit with our own eyes. We love history, so we look at history and geography and things like that. I love vodka too. Eh? We can make a contest, no problem. But it's not the first thing that comes uh, to me when I think about Russia. a very positive surprise. Yeah, for me, Russia is it's a long history. And as I love history, you know, you look at the history of Russia in the Middle Ages, in the 16th century, in the 17th century, you see the modernization that the Tsar makes, you see the revolution, you see everything. So I think a lot of people overlook, but you have to understand, this is something I found out in every country because I've traveled a lot. In every country, you see your country, you see the map, your country is the center of the world. And every history teacher, everybody tell you, okay, our country is the best and blah, 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 blah. Countries are countries, okay? People are people. And uh, if you see um, the world map, you see what happened and you think things are logical, they happen this way.